give them brand hands. Say what's up, America? I think you should know me, right? Hold on, half a replica. Hello and welcome to the third part of the installation series and uh, now it's time to get some X environment and a window manager or a desktop environment depending on what you prefer and uh, we're still gonna take it very slow and um, sure I do mistakes but I don't re-record because I want to show that uh, problems can occur no matter what. I don't want to do a flawless video because it is not very realistic. <coughs> so, first I will launch my virtual box and uh, let that boot up. Check. And before you do anything, just make sure you are up to date. That was because it didn't have time to establish the network. So now it works. Nothing to do. All right. <coughs> then we need our X server and X in it. Here we can choose different packages, but they are so small and contains good stuff to have. So I just go with enter. like that as you saw it's not Xenit it's Sorg Xenit anyway here you can choose in my case I go with one because this is a virtual box on my physical machine I have the number four but uh, and just go with enter and now while it's downloading we can just talk a little bit about that we can take a look at the physical machine. NVIDIA. Yep, I have the NVIDIA Live GL, as you saw in the little list here. But um, if you have an ATE card, you have the Radeon, these ones. And in the Yaur, you have the catalyst drivers. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is a good one. I had an AMD card a few years ago and I had that one because it's recompiled. That is the kernel module, FGLRX. <coughs> but um, it can take some experiment before you get a working graphical driver. It, um, it was way harder before, like 10 years ago, it was a real pain. So uh, it's a bit easier now, but it can still take some trial and error to get it running. Hence the MESA, it, uh, it works every day, but you don't get the proper performance of your graphics card. Any minute. <coughs> and now there's no real need to mess with the X configuration file because we're gonna use the login manager instead. So we need the login manager. And just for this example, we go with the LXDM. Yep. And now I am sitting here and thinking, what? desktop environment we should go with first. I want to try them all or give them all a go but we have to start with something. So we take a look at the LX desktop. No, LXD. Um, what's it called? LX. LX, LX, LX. Brain freeze, LX desk, LX, 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 no, now with serious brain freeze, 
Aries, LXDE was the name I was looking for. LXDE. Well, we try that. LXDE. Yep, enter. Enter. So, <coughs> now it's downloading the LX desktop environment, which is very lightweight. It's similar to XFCE, but um, still not. It's graphical and all that, but no, more lightweight basically and from th this point you are able to do KDE or whatever you might want but now here's the thing we want the login manager to start when the system boots of course so system ctl enable lxdm.service and now the LXDM will start at boot. And if we take a look in the etc directory, we have the um, there we have the LXDM. Uh, 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 uh. Some configuration stuff like this one. <coughs> you can just read and uh, you can have different themes and all that. Or you can just use a completely different login manager. <coughs> the LXDM was just for an example. Me, myself, on my system, I use the Slim because it gets the job done. So we do a reboot. And now two things should happen. We should get the login manager. And when we log in, we should get the LX desktop. In theory. As I said, I don't remember everything flawless, so problems can occur. It just feels more real rather than just um, do everything absolutely perfect. LXDE and our password. No, admin. Oh, what do you know? A graphical desktop with the pre-installed stuff, which is, as you can understand, not much at all. At least we have a terminal, which is good, and the font really sucks. And um, I don't run this in full screen either. I'm just trying to show you guys how to do it. So, we don't even have a file manager, I believe not, let's take a look, no, no file manager, no browser, no nothing pretty much, no LX appearance to be able to change um, anything, but be no big problem, LX We have to sort this out. Preferences. Display. Style. Mono. Now you can see, right? Oh, I never can spell that right. LX app. That's because I'm not English, so some words are hard to me to spell. LX appearance. <coughs> Here's where you can change themes, icons, mouse, pointer, every, every, all of that stuff. But uh, we don't have very much installed at the moment. But here is what you do it, and uh, it works the same in open box, for example. But we need a file manager, and we go with Thunar. I like Thunar, it gets the job done just fine. And um, there is no transparency, no nothing. Just to minimize that one. Here we have transparency and here we have my Thunar and my themes and blah blah blah. The conky etc etc. So 
this can without too much work look like my system but um, as I said this is just to get you started we can fire up a new terminal <coughs> now it's, it's done so well suppose you want uh, uh, it's a bit tricky with a desktop within the desktop I have to say for example now I want open box so let's install open box it's already installed my bad uh, XFCE4 yes and this comes with a lot more stuff uh, uh, um, some themes and some icons and a little bit more um, tools and if you apologize while this is installing I'm gonna have some coffee and once again I apologize for my uh, sometimes I don't have so good flow in my speak but uh, I hope it get better and I also hope you find this useful and that uh, myself is getting more comfortable with this and can explain stuff a little better <coughs> anyway XFCE4 is done so we log out log out and then we choose SX XFCE session and see what we have Ta -da! default look the XFCE which comes with a lot more stuff but now it's just mashing in every stuff you need XFCE terminal and as you see there is no transparency and I'm not sure if it's running any compositor at the moment I don't think so uh, boop, 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 boop. Where is that background color? No. I guess it's because it don't find a compositor. Anyway, feel free to look around and mess around. And then um, if we do a screen fetch now. No, I don't have it. To the pack, man. Screen fetch. And that is because if you look at my review regarding Manjaro 17.0 Yelivar or what it's so called it was 1279 packages that's a lot of packages so here we are with our fresh install with the stuff we need and all that and take a look at this dear dear friends 394 packages mm -hmm. suppose we are installing KDE now. Do you really believe that KDE is 900 packages more? We have both LXDM, the LX desktop, and the XFCE4 desktop environment. And we're still only 394 packages. Now we're talking about Arch being lightweight and all that, which is not the case when it comes to a pre-made distribution if you want it pure arch as all people say it's lightweight and all that you have to install it like this <coughs> you don't have a single package more than you want or need period there's nothing to discuss about that and uh, <coughs> and uh, this is obviously not a review of xfce but um, you can really feel that you have you know what everything is you know why you have it and you know what you don't have and and all that and from here it's just a matter of getting the stuff you want and we do it without a useless package manager no hard feelings my yaro but um like firefox game Maybe Blender, uh, VLC, boom, and sh slowly but sure, and that was a very bad expression, I thought in Swedish and talked in English, but um, 
we have the file manager Thunar and this is a very fast solid system and uh, I'm not sure what we do next maybe get the conkeys up and uh, start to customize it a bit and um, in these three steps the node the first one was not really anything the first was base install and then this and uh, you can probably you can probably do all this in like 30 minutes or something not all the time we have spent but I really really hope you feel more comfortable with it and you know how to sort things out I just want to show you one little thing as long as the Pac-Man is done since we now install the Firefox the, the FFmpeg and all that we also have VLC that can show videos etc and um, I'm finding it hard to believe you will have any sound so we need to install ALSA and Pulse and some uh, if you look down here I have the NVIDIA icon and uh, Synapse which is this little thing very nice stuff indeed if I just type GIMP hit find GIMP and I can launch it and um, I'm starting to get bored at waiting at this so we ah it's soon done I take some more coffee meanwhile all right yalla I really love ADSL I miss my fiber but uh, it works I can play battlefield without too much lag so I guess it's okay meanwhile desktop settings there's not very much backgrounds included so you might want to add some of that and if you don't know it the backgrounds are in your it's in the root folder but as well is in your home as well in dots let's see view 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 control h in the local share you can add a folder name wallpaper there's not many folders here at the moment and there's a reason for that as well I'm talking about these ones the picture document downloads music public desktop video <coughs> the ones that usually are there with the specific icon as well but that will also pop up later on now I'm aborting that because I don't have the time to wait so what we want is Yao Grub Customizer. No, it's like that. We want to install that one. Nope, yep, yep. And the reason for that is a very handy little tool. You know, your Grub screen at the beginning where you have the option to choose what to boot you can customize that as well either with uh, a background of your own choice or maybe just a theme overall there are, there are many pre-made themes to download and this utility makes it super easy to customize your grub which is usually a kind of bad idea to do that it's easy to make it crash and start booting your system which is a bit sad and now we can see the yaot in action as you can see it builds this application specifically for 
this system, which is very, very nice. So, the Grub Customizer requires root. Look, here we have it, the Grub Customizer. In appearance settings, you can either just choose how you want it to look, blah, 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 we can take that. It would probably look like shit, but I just want to show you. You can change your font, you can select the background. But you can also install pre-made themes, which should pop up here. At the moment, we don't only have the star field. You can also edit the command when it's booting. For example, removing that quiet part I show you, so you can see the boot messages and all that. And um, it's just super, super nice. If you have multiple operating system, maybe Arch and Mint and Windows and uh, God knows what, you can select what to boot. There it is, predefined or previously. So you can, if you have Windows, you can just select that. So if your whole family is using the computer, so you can also, you can add it, add so it boots Windows rather than Linux. And that one we don't want. I don't want it quiet and I wanted to boot that one. Save it. I remember that my first videos I, I recorded multiple times because as soon as I said something wrong or did something wrong, I started all over again. <coughs> but you know what? Now I don't care. So you have to live with that. Reboot system. And we should have a... Oh, look how awful it was. But you get the point. It's very easy to customize your own grub. In my case, I just have the default, but with a fancy background, which looks kind of nice. So, now it's up to you. And you have to let me know if you find it useful that I should do a complete long episode about getting X XFCE to look something like, more like this, maybe some transparency, some nice utilities, <coughs> a nice little conky and all that. I leave that up to you to decide. But um, as I said, if you want anything else, just do a Pac-Man. Had to get Swedish keyboards like that. And your preferred desktop environment. I don't, I'm not sure. I did. I had to look. If Unity is available. No hard feelings about that. I still don't want it. But uh, KD4. So I suppose you can install it like. Nope. What's the name of KDE? KDE plus five. KD5 maybe. Hmm. No, now I remember. I believe it's the plasma desktop. Yeah. So um you should have enough meat on your legs to uh, solve your problems at the moment. Otherwise, just leave a comment. I will sort it out, I promise. I just hope we have made some new friends to the Linux community and remember what I said we still only have four and four packages and if you haven't watched my um, review of Manjaro look 859 and I, I have a lot of stuff going on uh, like the blender so for example um, I have everything I can possibly need and I'm still Three, four hundred packages less than the KDE distribution of from Manjaro. It just gets your mind going. How could you 
have so many packages that you don't need. And before we quit this, I just want to show you one thing I forgot. Where go to where it there it is. You want the network manager. Network manager. Because now it's super easy to, as I said in the first episode or the second one, if you install the network manager, it will be a breeze to install your Wi-Fi. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. You just it's like in Windows, no problem at all. No text configuration, no nothing. You just fix it. And um, the network manager is also a daemon. So system.ctl sudo system.ctl enable network manager. Notice it's a capital N and a capital M. Otherwise it won't find it. It's very annoying. But at the moment it, it's not running. If, if I boot the system it will start. But I don't bother to boot at the moment. So just start it. Okay. And then we have to we want to have the tray for it so we can get a little handy icon in the in the panel what was the name of that it was sudo pack, pack manager network manager it did it do it was it was where is it Okay, I have to cheat. And let's see my. Oh! Just like that, I remember it. It is the NM applet. Come on. Alright. Maybe they have a new name of it. All oh, right. Here we have it. Network Manager GUI Connection Editor and Widgets. Install that one as well. Should be called NM Connection Editor. Look at that! Now it's fairly easy to edit your. I don't have any Wi Fi in this case because it's a virtual box. But you have another option as well, and that is the WICD. It does pretty much the same job. We can just take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, it doesn't matter at all if you're using the network manager or the WICD. It's uh, pretty much the same. Blah, 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 blah. Let's install that one as well. Oh, I, I already have it. System CDL Stop Network Manager. Enable VC. Enable VC. There you have it. And as you see we get we got a nice little icon. There. There we have it. 
no wireless network found that's not a big mystery as i said i don't have any on this computer at all because it's a virtual box but it's uh, insanely easy to get stuff done now do 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 So, that's pretty much it. You're on your own now. And uh, I guess I will do some more short videos about specific things. And uh, I apologize for the small uh, memory blackouts I got and uh, all that. I could edit it all away. But I'm going to leave this uncut. It doesn't matter if I have used Arch for the last 10 years, I still forgot packages I very, very, very rarely used. So, uh, it just feels more real. You can always mess up. And um, I prefer to show how to fix small things that you mess up. Shut down. And that's pretty much it. So plan A, you want to know more about the uh, virtual box art installation series stuff. <coughs> or if you want me to uh, show you a bit more about the open box stuff. Hands down open box is the by far the most useful thing in my opinion. But we all have different thoughts about that. But for now I recommend that you play around. Use the wiki, Google some stuff, and uh, I guarantee in a couple of weeks you will be a very comfortable Arch user that know you can fix stuff as you want. And when in doubt, leave a PM, write to me on the Facebook page, do whatever you want. And if you find this series useful, like it, recommend it. And I'll see you soon. Bye.